prepared for the same project number three, get a point, and he functions in reasons. Reason to speak and a reason to be silent. Please welcome Lukas Levy. Can you please raise your hand if you work? <laughs> if there's something in common. Okay, can you please raise your hand if sometimes during your work you do things because you must, not because you want to? Okay, still have some common ground. Well, I'll be, my, the purpose of my speech today, because what we're just describing is the what I call the dead time. The time when you're working, that we're forced to do something that we do not exactly want to. The purpose of my speech today is to take a different perspective at that, that time and to show you or share with you how, how I try to fight it and how you can do the same thing as well. Now speaking about all this dead time, I think these are you know the moments when you are at work. This is the time for me when I'm the least motivated, when I'm the least effective, and when I'm Board. For example, when I need to prepare a lot of reports from Excel. Numbers are okay for me, but if it's too much for them, I'm pretty done. Now, sometimes if I would have a look at all these things, and all these things, how the reports have been preparing, and at that time, I would just think, I just hope this is over with. I just can't wait for Friday afternoon when this is done, I can relax for the weekend. I'll be waiting for the future to say. And then I would think, well, okay, but do you remember, do you all maybe remember when we were at the university? How much we are trying to, you know, how much we are looking forward to the moment and we will reach, you know, to this either prestigious or hip or international company where we will start our future and we will work with full passion. Well, I certainly remember that moment, but I also remembered, you know, at high school, how much I would be looking forward to that moment when finally I'll be able to reach the university and study the focus subjects of economy while being born in high school, and the exactly the same thing at the elementary school. So the thing is, in all those stages of my life, I was facing some dead time, but during that dead time, I was just looking for the future to save me. But now, when I'm already doing my work, you know, what future is there to say in retirement? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not so sure. So, to think what I believe that we can all do with that is, you know, to face the dead time in a different way. Not to be bored, but from tomorrow to start working with a mission on, my, on our mind. Because all those minutes that we spend in activities that we do not like doing, are minutes that nobody will give us back. So the mission, ladies and gentlemen, is to fight for every minute of our day. Now, how are we going to do this? Before we get there, can you think of a specific dead time activity of yours that is doing there during your working? Some activity that you must do but you do not enjoy doing? Can you think of some? Right. Can you give me an example? What is one? What is yours? My. Mira, Mira, you can start. Uh, data entry. Dead, okay, data entry. Okay, how about you? Lesson preparation. Lesson preparation. Uh -huh. How about you? I was thinking about irony. Irony. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And these all are perfect activities for that. The thing is, the standard, I think, what I would do is I would just do them slowly and I would, you know, feel really bored. But I believe we can turn each and every one of them into an adventure. Now, how are we going to do this? Because what we want, we want to be spending our time on things that are purposeful, where we learn, where we grow, right? Maybe irony is not exactly one of them. But <laughs> we can turn irony into an adventure. Now, this approach is very simple. First, what I want you to do tomorrow when you come to work, the first thing, measure. And that is just get an idea of which activities these are, the time activities, and how much time do they take you. 
out of the day, out of your eight hours or 10 or 12, or how many hours you work per day. Now, the step number two, improve. I want you to think how you can decrease the amount of hours. What you can do to make the amount of hours shorter. And in the end, I want you to evaluate. After your day finishes, take a look and see whether you were able to make any progress to cut those dead time activities and make that time smaller. Now, how can you do that? The first thing, there are four key questions you need to ask yourself. First, do I need to do it? I'm preparing reports, but for a long time our department has a budget for a student. So the only thing I was postponing for so long would be to write a job description for the student. I've finally done it, and maybe there will be someone else to run the reports instead of me. Second, does, does anyone need to do that activity? Every month, we will, I will be preparing new hire report sent out to the company with some specific information. But at one point, I decided that is somebody really reading this? So I, one month, I did not. <laughs> Send report. And you know what happened? Nothing happened! <laughs> Time saver like hell. Next. The next thing you get, and this is really adventurous. Can I do it faster? I know there are some activities like ARRI are really boring, but imagine you just you know, spend some time researching YouTube what is the, how would Tim Ferriss do the ironing, you know, how the <laughs> most productive guru would do the ironing so you can do it in like 10% of time. That makes it exciting and it will save you time. And four, how can I learn to love it? How can you turn a dead time activity into something that will actually add value to what you're doing? For example, for me, writing emails, I don't just write emails, I try to put e create each in each email's connection, put there some jokes or some crazy stuff what people afterwards complain about. At least it's exciting. <laughs> now, the key thing about this, the key thing is that I think it's very important we realize that every minute during our working day, every minute is ours. It's not that we are trading our time for money. It's not about that. Every minute is ours and our own. So I think if we approach it with this way, and we fight for every minute, well, first of all, we will make it, we will get more minutes for the things we really want to do. And the second thing, we will even those dead minutes turn into an adventure. Let's talk about it next week. Do the